I welcome once again to Arrow Forward Ministries International. I pray that all is well and you are abiding in the word of the living God. And today I want to take the word of God from the book of Saint, of Luke, sorry, chapter 17, verses 1 to 4. And the word of God declare. Then he said to his disciples, It is impossible that no offenses should come, but woe to him through whom they do come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea, than he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you several times in a day, and seven times in a day return to you, saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. Eternal, most gracious Heavenly Father, I ask you for clear interpretation of your word. Relevant for this 21st century, Lord, so that your sons and daughters, your chosen ones, even those who are seeking to worship me in spirit and truth, I come to know you as their personal savior, will acknowledge your word that their life will be direct, directed through the vision of Jesus Christ. This I declare and decree in none other name but our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's name. Amen. It's imperative that Christians, disciples, apostles, prophets, members in the body of Christ understand the importance of forgiveness. And there are many times I hear Christians ask, how much shall you forgive a person? It's clear, if your brother offends you several times or seven times, but I don't want to put a number to this, but the word of God is clear, seven times, and he repent, you should forgive him. And that's written all over the word of God. If a person repent, forgive them. Just my fault, seven times, yet you rise again. You must give, forgive 70 times seven, and so forth. But it's important that we understand the importance of forgiveness because we are living in a time and season where humanity as a whole falls short of that word called forgiveness. The ability to overlook and understand that we are just human beings subject to failure, subject to making mistakes in our lives, we require forgiveness. And forgiveness is just not only for the normal person Forgiveness is also for organizations, corporate societies who seek and do dishonorable things in their departments of human resources like firing people unnecessarily and cheating them out of their livelihood and exploiting their people. Not having the ability to show mercy and peace and grace because these departments are run with organized criminals with criminal behaviors that are structured in a legal form that makes sense to the corporate organizations, but not relevant and conducive to the ethical and moral development of people as a whole or employees as a whole. So it's vitally, on a, it's vitally imperative that we understand what forgiveness means and what it represents. And we must understand that systems are put in place that rival individuals, personally speaking, that you have the heart of compassion and forgiveness, but these structured systems are designed not to love and to forgive because they're all about winning, winning the active things in the world. You go to court, they must win the case. They must be the best lying lawyer. They must be the best at what they do. They have to impress their bosses who lived a fake life who have no mercy and compassion and work for multi-billionaires who can care less about the poor and destituted, who can care less about if you live or survive. All they're concerned about is the power of the dollar and the profits in their business are continuously rising while the employees going broke and going starve and can't get bills meeting, can't get mortgages meeting, can't get their livelihood put together or feed their children or family members, but that put that word called forgiveness comes with 
mercy comes with grace the understanding that we are more than just people but we are spirit and body who deserve the, to receive the best respect that we can possibly give to each other there has to be room in every individual life that we can make mistakes and over and over we are built in a sinful society, a sinful world that is represented by sin and we make mistakes that often offend the sinful reactions of the world that we live in. And when this happens, no mercy is extended. So this word forgiveness goes beyond the individual at, at the best. It goes beyond just one person learning to forgive each other. It's a compounded system that's structured with hate. No mercy is shown. Love to tell each other you are fired. Love to show you to the door and have you embarrassed. And then you've got to go to the system all because there's no such word as forgiveness. They want pinpoint accuracy in the organization. You are not to make mistakes. You are to be perfect. And this presents a perfect problem amongst humanity. This presents a perfect problem in the very churches that we worship in. This presents a perfect problem in your household and your community and in organizations. This forgiveness is a, is a word that is designed to restore and build confidence among each other. But we live in a society where that word it don't make sense. It's offensive to use the word forgiveness. It offends people. It comes across that you are soft. When you make an apology, it comes across that you are soft. You got to be tough hearted and show no mercy, show no grace, gracefulness. You show nothing that is conducive to the development of we as a people living into this society. And all this is, is a bunch of systems that congregated together that designed to destroy humanity, put together by demonic structures. You see, it's, it's easy for us to talk about forgiveness because often when we talk about forgiveness in the church, we are speaking to an individual in the congregation. We are telling members of the congregation the importance of forgiveness. And then you carry a forgiven, a forgiveful heart willing to forgive but you and your perfect biological structure goes out to work the next day you made a mistake but it was only a day ago you was thought about forgiveness you was mentioned by the word of god about forgiveness and just a day after your boss showed no mercy no compassion and you are fired. And then you start to tell yourself, Lord, I, I don't know how this thing forgiveness works because I took your word yesterday for it. I think it's a good thing to do. But here I am. One simple mistake and it cost me my job. It cost me my livelihood. I can't take care of my well-being any longer. I have to go on the system and depend for some benefits from the system in order to get by. And that word forgiveness plays in the mind. But I come to let every born again believer in the body of Christ understand that when you are faced with these situations in your life, it's still imperative that you have the spirit of forgive them even though they have fired you, fired you because the word of God declared that all things work together for good for all of those who trust in God. But if you go with the hit in your heart because your boss fired you wrongfully, you set up a physical and spiritual barcade in your life that prohibits you from seeing the glory of God. It blame for you to see what God is showing you. It blame for you to receive what God is giving unto you. And when these things happen, you got to tell yourself, 
I am still who I am, a born again believer, a blood washed Christian, a spirit filled Holy Ghost, appointed, anointed man or woman of God. I will not fall for the snares of hell, but I will rise to the occasion. I will learn to forgive. I will show compassion. I will show mercy. I will show grace. I will show peace that my God will lift me to a higher level, that I would receive the blessing that God wants to bestow in my life. It doesn't matter what you are going through. Forgiveness has to be the core part of our life because if we don't learn to forgive, we're going to have hatred building in our heart. And woe unto the man who let hatred consume his heart because it just doesn't consume your heart. It consume your mental faculties. It consume your emotional our feelings, it can control your psychological being, it controls your whole entire being, and it destroys you. Hate, the perfect recipe for spiritual destruction. Hate, it's destroying, it is, there is no painkiller to deal with hate. There is no psychological treatment to deal with hate unless you are released by the blood of Jesus Christ or unless you come forth in the presence of God and repent of your sins. Hate will consume you. That's why it's imperative to understand that love is the greatest gift of it all. And I'm talking about some romantic love feeling for someone. I'm talking about the agape love of Jesus Christ. The love that show compassion and grace and mercy. The love that extend deliverance. The love that cause you to bind and to loose and to deliver and to heal. That love is the love that I'm talking about that represents the members in the body of Christ and represent the totality of the Holy Spirit functioning in you as a member in the body of Christ. Love. We live in a world with hate. A world where nations destroying each other over covetousness rather than a leader get up and say or rather in this most recent times a leader like Putin get up and say to Zelensky will look Mr. President, you know my ancestors have done bad things in the USSR times. I want to make it right with you. I want to make it a place where your people can live comfortably and my people can live comfortably. That we can live together in unity and harmony and to forgive our generational past, the generational curse that caused problems in our lives and the lives of people. But no, the spirit of destruction, of hate and covetousness want to embrace all those other nations that once was a part of the USSR or the United so Soviet Socialist Republic. They want to bring this stuff back. It's all a combination of hate. Hate do things like what Trump did could cause bigotry and cause problems and right in the insurrection to destroy humanity and leadership bring confusion and conflict to the minds of the simple minded and even some of those who call themselves members in the body of Christ. Hate about when you start to embrace the manifold wisdom of God and embrace his love and the integrity of his righteousness and establish it upon the table of your that love conquers it all. We are living in a time where the all carnal reflection of sin, the all carnal man has to be put to death and we have to let a new creation in the body of Christ be established in the, the eyes of society, established in the eyes of mankind for God said in this time and season I, I want to pour my spirit upon all flesh that my sons and daughters will rise in this time and pro 
prophesy in my name and heal in my name and deliver in my name that my kingdom will be exalted and my kingdom will be exalted and my name will be magnified and my name will be glorified and those shall come to know me as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the Alpha and the Amiga, the beginning and the ending and who was and who is and who is to come, that they will know that I am the Lord thy God that created thee. Love is the perfect recipe for restoration and elevation in the body of Christ. For the word of God declared in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish but have eternal life. This word love is taken for granted We all walk around and say, my brother, my sister, I love you. Do you really mean it? Do you really mean it? What is your acknowledgement of love? What is your definition of love? Is your lips saying one thing and your heart saying the next? Because you see, love is a key that opens the doors of hell And when it opens the doors of hell, a spotlight of love goes right into the belly of darkness. And the crooked comes straight. Or the blind start to see. The destitute become upright. And restoration is come upon the blind and the captive of sin. Love is the key that bring peace and harmony to society. It brings peace and harmony to families. Love is the key to restoration. And we brag about it every day and we see, we hear, oh, I love you. Now, all these intentions because the devil will tell you he loves you too. The devil will will send some handsome man or some nice prince, some Wall Street dude, some financial broker. God bless you with finance, but they know it. They can see what's in your account. And they bring some old crappy story. Or you can invest in here and before you know it, you've got this at the moment equity on what you've invested your money in and just a matter of time before you know in a couple of years you'll be at this point and you'll be at the next then chaos break loose stock market fall your money drop and some thoughts start to go through your brain do you know the amount of people who went crazy after losing money and in investments because the fall for the love story. You see, love just doesn't take on the picture that I love you. You can tell people things that they love to hear. It it, it, it takes on the embodiment of love. It sounds great. And the carnal spirit falls for it. And sometimes the Christian man too. You see, the devil sit down and he orchestrate his demonic plans and how to break down the Christian man and woman. It's about mind games. And we fall for it all the time. But we want to examine love and its pure intentions and its purity. It is absoluteness. You see, when, when you have the love of God, it aligns you to perfection. It shapes you to destiny of success. God is love and he said that if he abide in you and you abide in me, whatsoever you ask in his name, he shall grant it to you. He says, see, he first, The kingdom of God and all things that's good and righteous shall be added unto you. 
These fundamentals are built on the principle of God's love. The ability to live in a chaotic world and feel loved by a supreme power. To know that you know that you are loved by the almighty God. To know that you are walking in perfection. To know that you are walking in prosperity. To know that you are worshipping a king of kings and a lord of lords. To know that you are worshipping God in spirit and in truth. To know beyond a shadow of a doubt within your heart of hearts. You know that it's Jesus Christ is in the middle of your heart. Pumping righteousness around the body and around the mind. You know that you know that Jesus Christ is aligning himself with you. You know that you know that Jesus Christ is bringing you to a point in your life where you shall not be a victim to society, but you shall walk victoriously all the days of your life while you dwell in the house of the living God. Too long. The men and women had just call God name for granted. We sing beautiful every day. God, we love you and God is an awesome God. And you know, sometimes we are doing it because it feels like the right thing to do. God don't want his sons and daughters to be sucking up to him. God wants his sons and daughters to acknowledge who he really are in your life, to acknowledge that he's your personal savior, to acknowledge he's the loved one who gave his life upon Calvary's cross. God wants you to worship him in spirit and truth. Don't give God the gift wrap love story because God don't want it. God wants righteousness from out of your heart and out of your mouth. And we take those love songs and create a beautiful entertainment package and we sell it to the world. We sell it to the world. And this is what I'm talking about. You come with a love songs, good renditions, good lyrics, and the world rejoices at it. It's going to like to a rock party. Just to get a high. You get a high. You, you, you can't tell who is who. You don't know what they're doing. You can't tell the secular one from the one of God. God don't want suck-ups in his kingdom. He wants some folks who know that God had established righteousness in their spirit. That will worship God in spirit and truth. Not love stories. God is speaking to us in this moment and in this time and season. That our lifespan and his return are magnetically drawn together. We are that close. And God is asking you to be like the five wise virgins. To prepare yourself. Establish a light. Be like a beacon that set upon a hill. Stop the false worship. Stop the false pretending. Stop the false sucking up. God don't want that. Because some of you lie in bed in a fornicative matter and you get on the stage the next day and proclaiming the name of God and this just doesn't work. It may work for you as a carnal person, but according to the integrity of God, it don't stand, it don't walk, it don't work. God will pull you clean out of his mouth. Righteousness exalted for nation. It exalted a nation. So it's vitally important. The ability to forgive your brothers and, and sisters with the integrity of the agape love of God is essential if you is to move on and live victoriously as a member in the body of Christ. 
It's imperative that we understand who we are as heirs and joint heirs to the throne of God, a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a peculiar kind of a people. The spirit of discernment is the foundation of, of our lives as a, a born-again believer. That spirit of discernment is the compass and the navigation of the Holy Spirit himself that pointing us to the direction of righteousness. We are in times where we can no longer take life for granted. The devil is reaping havoc and he's destroying society. He's doing his best to destroy humanity. You have to be vigilant. Because where there's no vision, people will perish. But this is your time of visitation, says so the Lord. This is the time that you exalt God and glorify his name. Now to all those who have been tuning in, I want to say peace be unto you. And my love goes out to you in sincerity, in spirit and in truth. Now eternal most gracious heavenly father, I thank you for your word. I pray that every living recipient God of this word now, Lord, will start to seek you in spirit and in truth. But more importantly, understand that love, love is the key foundation to our hearts that put us, to, put us as one with the Holy Spirit. Because God is love. And if we embrace God, we embrace love. And if we embrace love, we will give love. And we will forgive continuously, 70 times 7. We will continue to forgive. And Father, plant that spirit of discernment in us today, Lord that we will walk victoriously in this time and season as members in the body of Christ, glorifying your name, edifying your name, exalting your name, and magnifying your name. This I decree and declare in none other name, but our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's name. Amen.